For more interesting videos, subscribe to Tech Simplified TV and hit the bell icon for updates. Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of Call Programming in VLSI. In this episode, we will discuss about basic data structures in Perl, array, uh, also called list in Perl, various way of array creation, accessing the array uh, or the list, array of array, sub array, also known as array slicing, various array operators context concept of scalar and list context and context examples so this is the menu for today let's begin data structure in Perl so beginning here uh, I would like to emphasize one thing in uh, Perl basically the data structures generically called list specifically let us see what are they so the data structure in Perl are subcategorized in but two particular uh, parts the first one is array or list it is uh, most of the time called list or uh, array array is the more generic term some in some text you will find it is uh, referred to as a list and the other one is associative array or hash it is more like a hash table uh, from uh, general data structure so it is a mapped uh, where, where a key and its corresponding value are mapped so this is called associative array in today's episode we'll be mostly discussing about the array or list in next episode we'll explore the associative array or hash the list or array so uh, let's uh, begin uh, uh, knowing about uh, the array or the list in Perl okay so array or list variables always start with the at the rate symbol okay so uh, like uh, scalars uh, start with the dollar symbol okay array always start array variables start with at the rate symbol okay array or list are variable length so uh, unlike uh, C uh, in C language where you see your array when you define it it has a fixed length but in Perl you uh, you do not have any such restriction so when you declare an array it remain uh, uh, variable length so you don't have to declare any length of it okay so you just def uh, define it and uh, you can go on array can be declared without length just mentioned okay this length can vary even after creation so that's that's why i mentioned that you create a just define an array and uh, dynamically it can increase okay array or list can contain any sort of scalars so uh, in previous uh, the first episode uh, we have uh, discussed about the different types of scalars okay so they can uh, be all uh, packed together okay so even a combination of strings numeric etc so that means different types of scalars can be packed into one array array elements are written in parentheses okay so uh, it i am not talking about here the uh, array variable but the contents of the array they can be written in parentheses use my whenever creating the array or list so the, we use a uh, we use a use strict module right so that uh, uh, restrict ourselves to use my every time whenever we are creating any new variable so that's why what uh, have been emphasized at this point so uh, let's uh, move on uh, this slide is complete so move on creation of list or array So the first one, the first line here, uh, here we have written my at the rate array 1, 2, 3 in the parenthesis and we hit a semicolon here to terminate the line. So this is homogeneous type of data. Now in the second line we have the same array name my at the rate array 
uh, we have orange and 2.7 so this is a heterogeneous type of uh, uh, elements in the array so uh, one is a string another one is a real number so uh, both type of arrays can exist okay and here uh, the third one is uh, my other array equal to uh, within parenthesis is dollar b 21 then dollar c now these dollar b and dollar c are scalars which we assume we have already defined before we have we are uh, uh, declaring this uh, array and once we do that this array will contain the corresponding values of dollar b and dollar c okay my at the rate array is equal to empty parenthesis so this is basically an empty list okay so this uh, mentioned so uh, this can come as an interview question also so uh, good to know about it the next one is my at the rate array is equal to within parenthesis we use one dot dot five so this means this uh, uh, will expand it as uh, within parenthesis one two three four five okay the next one here is uh, my at the rate array the first element element is one dot dot three that means uh, one up to three will be here then seven then eleven dot dot thirteen so the whole array will come out as 1 2 3 7 11 12 13 so this is another way of uh, creating an array my at the rate array is equal to dollar b dot dot dollar c the range determined by the values of the variables b and c here the next one is my at the rate array within double quotes we are writing apple comma orange then comma then jackfruit and then grapes okay so this is another type of array where the elements are strings okay now my at the rate array is equal to qw qw is a function called quoted word function okay which will break whatever uh, is given as an argument with any of the white spaces so here the arguments are apple orange jackfruit and grape so these are each of them are uh, space separated so it will create the same array just we have written in the before line okay so we are done with this particular uh, set of examples where we have uh, shown how to create an array let's move on to the next section accessing an array or list so here uh, each array element is accessed as dollar array then the index so uh, when we are defining the array we are not using any fixed index but these array values can be accessed with index okay and uh, this is how because each uh, array element is a scalar so we start with dollar and then use the array variable name okay here and then we within uh, the rectangular bracket we mention the index index is not uh, the word index rather than one two three four zero whatever the uh, index in integer form so they will be used my dollar ref back equal to backslash at the rate array this gives the reference or better we know as a pointer to an array okay dollar ref will contain the pointer to this array or the reference to an array okay my dollar length is equal to scalar scalar is a function basically and within uh, uh, parenthesis we write at the rate array so this gives the array length that means how many elements are there in this array my dollar last index equal to dollar hash then the name of the array variable that is arr here okay so this gives the um, index of this last element of the array so in this line i have just a typo i missed the semicolon here but there should be a semicolon here when you are writing this statement so this gives the last element index of the array okay dollar array dollar arr and within a rectangular bracket we mention minus one this gives the last element of the array 
negative indices count backward from the end of the array so in if you, if you increase the negative indices right so they will give you the array elements one by one from the end point towards the beginning okay my at the rate array is equal to one two three four four variables in array okay my dollar le is le1 is equal to dollar array 0 so le1 that is this particular scalar variable gets 1 so this is how you access uh, one array element and 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 uh, save the same value into another scalar my dollar le2 is equal to dollar array index is 1 so in the same way it will get 2 now if i write the thing here in in parenthesis i write dollar array 0 and dollar array 1 and then in the right hand side of the equal to i in the parenthesis i write i reverse reverse the position here dollar array 1 and dollar array 0 this will swap the two elements in the array okay so these are a few ways to access the array list uh, elements so we're done with this section so let's move on array of array okay so here uh, uh we will uh, talk very uh, talk about the very simple way of nesting arrays so very 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 simple format okay uh here uh obviously there are uh, uh, different depths of these things they they will come at the later uh, episodes not here because the purpose of this episode to uh, uh, make you aware of the basics uh, of the array and the advanced level the nesting advanced level nesting will be covered later okay later episodes so let's begin with the basics array of array here okay so my at the rate array 1 is equal to 1 2 3 this is the first array and then we write array 2 is 4 4 5 6 okay e easy okay so now we write my at the rate array 3 is equal to within parenthesis array 1 at the rate array 2 so this is gives uh, the, this command merges array 1 and array 2 so they are array of array so array 3 is array of array in a very simplistic format okay so where array 3 is the merged format of array 1 and array 2 uh, so uh again here my at the list one is one two three three values and my list two at the equal to list one all three values are copied so this is another uh i think operation here what we can do so directly we can copy one array into another in this way okay now what we are doing at list three okay so we are writing list three equal to four five then comma then at the rate list two and then comma six so at the third position here we have inserted another array that is list two so here it will get expanded and they will contain six values okay so uh, list two will be expanded since this is a very simplistic manner of array of array the, the expansion will happen here okay so we are done with this particular section let's move on to the next one sub array or something sometime it's called slicing uh, let's see my dollar array is equal to within uh, that is quoted word function and within parenthesis we write apple orange jackfruit grape and mango so here so in the first line i think there is a typo here uh, it should be i think uh, at the rate symbol rather than a scalar okay so at the rate array 2 4 okay is uh when when we write right it's not a two dimensional array it is uh dollar a 2 uh, that is array 2 and dollar array 4 so this this is i think uh, called uh, sub array right so here when we write 2 and 4 it uh, contains 2 and uh, the indices points uh, 2 and 4 of the original array okay
so when we write uh, my at the rate sub array 1 is equal to at the rate array 2 4 that means it will pick up jackfruit and mango okay the sub array will contain jackfruit and a mango so this example actually clears out the concept okay and uh, then here when we uh, do the sub uh, array 2 okay my sub array 2 and we write at the rate r then within the rectangular bracket we uh, write 2 dot dot 4 it is actually uh, expands as a uh, jackfruit grape and mango so you can see the first line there and here uh, you can see how they are um, uh, this sub arrays are defined so um, as the first line contain a typo instead of dollar r it will be uh, uh, there will be at the rate r so uh, make sure that is uh, corrected when you are typing the code uh, in your text okay so uh, that's all with this particular section so uh, let's move on to the next one various array operations so here the first one is push push is a function that is operated on any array okay and how we operate that the first argument is the array itself here it is at the rate list and then there is a new scalar value it could be a variable or it could be the value of the variable okay so dollar new we have written here generically so this uh, adds uh, one element that is dollar new at the end of the list or the array okay so here the entry is from the back side okay now if we want to do the reverse action of it we do dollar uh, old is equal to pop then at the rest list so the value which was uh, entered from the back side now will come back to the dollar old okay so push and pop are are uh, exactly opposite in the uh, usage okay so one uh, helps to insert one element from the uh, last point and uh, uh, another one uh, removes the last element okay so these uh, two are done and uh, let's move on to the next unshift okay so here we what we do mm, we mention the dollar list and then we uh, write the new scalar okay so dollar new so here uh, the new element okay the dollar new element is added from the beginning so from the in front of the zeroth position okay so that's how uh, a new list will be created okay when we assign this to a, a new array okay so the uh, sorry it uh, actually operates on the list itself and uh, at the uh, zeroth position uh, it, there is a shift and one new element is added okay now if we want to do the tick exact uh, opposite action of this what we do we do old equal to shift at the rate list so it exerts okay or removes the leftmost value okay fine So this also can be uh, achieved with uh, the notation written at uh, uh, right hand side that dollar old comma dollar list is equal to at the rate dollar list and the previous one also could be done with the uh, at the rate list equal to dollar new at the rate list. So these are uh, another way of uh, doing the same thing. So uh, it's up to you which one you use. Okay. So the next one is uh reverse so uh, we write array is equal to reverse then at the rate array 2 so array is the uh, at the rate array becomes the reverse of the array array 2 okay so all the elements uh, uh the order from beginning to end is reversed okay at the rate array is equal to sort array 2 this sort happens on the array elements and the outcome is uh ascii or alphabetic uh, sort order okay later we have an example we will see how things happen here okay 
so here at the rate sorted is equal to sort dollar uh, then within the curly uh, braces we have dollar a less than equal to greater than dollar b so this is this is a special notation or called a script to the sort okay and this dollar a and dollar b need not to be declared in uh, before so these are reserved variables uh, in the first episode i have talked about these variables and now i am showing the uh, uh, usage here and then at the right hand side we have unsorted uh, array okay so this sorts the integer or the real values in ascending order okay now uh, if we want to do uh, in a reverse order of this so we do what sorted equal to sort dollar b less than equal to dollar a uh, less than equal to greater than dollar a and then the unsorted this sorts the integer or real values in descending order okay so these are two very good questions and they can come uh, as interview question sometimes okay uh, the next one is chomp at the red array so this chomps each element of the array so it's worth of trying out so you define and try out all these options okay uh, we are done, uh, done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide an example so here uh, the array operations i have uh, summed up them in a particular example and uh, i'll be uh, showing you in this pink box the code goes and the black box the output will be displayed so start our code with the first line with the perl installation hash bang user bin perl then we use use strict then my list at that then i write the values one three six two five four so they are in a jumbled up order okay now i print this it comes as the same okay now what we do list uh, sort at the rate list now what we are doing here we are sorting the list and taking the outcome in again in the list so uh, we again print this now what we see is that they are uh, sorted in orderly manner one two three four five six now uh this sort is i mentioned ascii sort right now you may confuse get okay these are so sorted numerically no so you will see later okay so here we have you list equal to quoted what small medium big so and we print it it says small medium big and uh, here when we uh, use sort on this list and outcome again we save on the list what happens uh, print out big medium small so you see they are now arranged alphabetically that is in the ascii order so b comes first then m and then s so the first letters are there if we have a different kind of dictionary words they will be uh, 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 sorted as per the uh, alphabetical or the dictionary way okay so here another list is uh, we d define as uh, 1 2 4 16 22 13 so now just uh, before i was uh, pointing out at this point in this example we'll see now we print it it comes as uh, the jumbled up order now we apply sort what happens let's see now it has uh, sorts the ascii order 1 then 13 then 16 then 2 then 22 then 4 so you can see 1 after that comes 1 3 then after then it uh, comes as 1 6 then comes 2 then comes 2 2 and then 4 so this is a ascii order sorting so if you get confused by the first example of this uh, code that uh, the code is sorted uh, in a numerical way no this is actually the sort only does in ascii order okay in this case our values were such that they were sorted like that but when, once we change the values here we see that it is uh, operating in a different fashion so this is ascii sorting now for numerical sorting what we do we introduce this uh, particular method so here at the least equal to sort and then the script comes here dollar a less than equal to greater than dollar b and again mentioning these dollar a dollar b are reserve variables and need not to be declared at any point okay at the rate list so what happens when we print this it sorts in a numerical order in an ascending order okay 1 2 4 13 16 22 now if we want to sort it in a decreasing order what what we have to do or descending order okay so we write list sort dollar b dollar b great less than equal to greater than dollar a so we switch the position of dollar a and dollar b okay this is the script so at the rate list and then we print now we see 22 16 13 4 2 1 so these all the integers now sorted in a uh, descending order so 
with this example we have clarified the different sorting functions and it is worth to try out uh, the others that i have not shown here and please do uh, comment once you try and uh, let's move on to the next slide this section will talk about context so another thing before beginning here context here is very important this section because uh, this is a very crucial aspect of uh, Perl variables how they are uh, used okay so that's why this section i have include so in between the array and the hash so uh, let's start the section to see what how and how it is important so scalar and list context so in uh, the yellow box our de de definition and code will be there and black box the output of the particular code will be shown so here Perl has a notion of different context in which evaluation can take place so in Perl, when we are evaluating there could be different contexts which are this context number one is scalar context and number two is list context now when i mention list list can contain either array or hash okay so scalar list and uh, list context these are two contexts one is a scalar and the list context okay so things behave differently depending on what context they are in okay so i will exemplify later uh, in this particular slide only okay so you will see that okay an expression is in scalar context if the value it generates will be used as a scalar okay an expression is a list context if the value it generates generates will be used as a list that is an array or hash so it depends how we are uh, storing the outcome okay that is called context my at the red things here one array is defined peach the elements are it's a, it's a uh, heterogeneous uh, array here peach then two then apple then 3.14 that is the value of pi okay so uh, this is a heterogeneous array so what do i do now we define now we'll define three different variables thing one thing two and thing three so first we are at thing one which we equate with things second dollar thing two is at the rate things the third is we write within parenthesis dollar thing three is equal to at the rate things now why we have given these three things i will uh, print them one by one and uh, i'll explain the first one thing one is a list context it the outcome is here stored as a list next one is a scalar but here it gets the count of the elements how many elements are there it gets the count okay and the third one here here it gets a sub array that is the peach the first element here okay when we use it in parenthesis so here uh we are taking the outcome of the same array in three different fashion and in three different uh, uh cases we are getting the three different values so these this is the importance of the context so that means this is how we are uh, uh storing the outcome okay so at different context the value will be different so keep this in mind this can come as a interview question that will be very helpful to you okay so we are done with this particular slide let's move on more on context here so uh we write my then within uh, parenthesis i write first comma second there are two scalar variables here equal to add the rate array what it will do the dollar first and the dollar second are assigned to the first and second element of the array so this will happen that those values will go into the first and the second uh, index point values of the at the rate array will go into dollar first and dollar second 
now if we change the second one with at the rate symbol and name it with a different array okay variable that is at the rate array that is rest at the rate rest okay so here the second one changes and the right hand side is same here what it will do dollar fast is assigned to the first element of at the rate array and at the rate rest will get the rest of the elements of the array at the rate array this is how the thing will behave so now you can understand the context in much more clarity now the third one here we have swapped the types here first one we keep a array at the rate copy and the second position we keep dollar at the rate, uh, dollar dummy okay now what will happen at the array any guess what will happen the immediate thing that comes as a derivation of the first one is not going to happen here in this case the dummy is not assigned array are variable length in Perl. This is the first thing that in this episode I have mentioned. So copy has no reason to stop by for copying the array which is in right hand side. Now what will happen to dollar dummy? The dollar dummy ends up with the undev value since at the rate copy eats up the entire available array. So this is uh, the the this is the usage of the context so how how we are placing things uh in the left hand side when the right hand side is a array or list things will be different at different cases so these are different contexts you have to remember them very carefully when you are coding in Perl and uh, these context related uh, things comes as a very uh, frequent interview questions so i think that also covered in this particular episode thank you guys uh, we have reached to the end of this episode and in next episode we will discuss about the associated by till then 